Okay, so here we are at Manifest Destiny. I haven't started yet, but I just wanted to clear up the two rules questions I had. One of them, when you have the most cities, you get this. And I guess you mark the victory points uh, on the table here while you have them. It's just a bonus that happens immediately upon the switch of who has the cities, I suppose. The rules aren't terribly clear on any of this. Uh, and then <laughs> the priority tokens go in here. I was using this to save uh, tokens to go into the current turn order the, or, or the uh, turn order choice or whatever and covering it up and making it impossible to see what's going on. This marks what cards can be played in a particular turn. Now, they're in between when a deck is first reshuffled, there's a special turn where you can play cards from either the previous era or the current era. I didn't note that. Alright, well, I'm going to get started, set up these uh, the cards for everyone, and then make the bids. One very important rule that I forgot to mention, when you go into an area with either natives, or if somebody else already has a token there, so for example, let's say blue is paying a token to go into New Mexico and fight, you roll an attack, and basically you're rolling two dice against one, possible modifiers on cards, whoever gets the highest die roll wins the fight, on a tie it usually goes to the defender unless there's cards again that affect that, I actually don't know they do. Whoever wins gets to keep the territory, which means perhaps something like this where the old person goes into the losses box, the new one has a new counter here, white side up to indicate that uh, that they gain something. Um, sorry for missing so much in the rules, but you know, I'm that way. Uh, I still have to get back to putting my little stickers on my counter on my little blocks, but then I should be able to start playing, I guess. So, looking at everybody's cards, I made decisions on what their bids were, starting with the first player who's going to be purple. Everybody bid five bucks out of the first three. The fourth player thought, ah, what I want, I'd be willing to pay five bucks for, but getting fourth pick or fifth pick and spending seems silly. I'm not willing to pay ten. The fifth player said, I'll pay ten. Fifth player pays his ten. <laughs> and is taking Virginia. Why? Because he has a tobacco card, an ore card. He just likes his combination here uh, and thinks that Virginia is going to go fairly late in the game. So he picked that up. He also gets the bid, which means his current turn order, he gets to choose what he wants. Um, doesn't really matter this, but where does he want to go? Uh, early expansion? <sighs> He's got an ore card he wants, but he would like some tokens. I think he's going to take second place. This is really kind of just a, geez, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'll go for it. Okay. Next goes to the first player, who's purple. Purple pays his five bucks and says, oh hey, what do I want? I want mm, I don't know why I bid. Ah, uh, he likes green. There aren't a lot of places where green is going to be clearly available. Maybe Pennsylvania. Uh, he gets a bonus for being in the U.S. though if he plays this card. So he's going to take that. He's going to take good old Pennsylvania, and that'll become his home territory. Now, the home territory already counts the 30 buck profit, or the other way around, however you want to phrase that. Now we go to the third player to choose, who's green. He has a couple of timber cards, and he says, I got away for five bucks, and Quebec. And that sounds good to me. Uh, fourth player also spent five bucks. What does he want? Well, 
He has a fur in the Hudson Bay Company and he feels screwed because the things closest to Canada are largely gone. His choices now are Louisiana and Mexico. Oh, there's got to be another one, right? Oh no, because the first player was up here, took Virginia. So Louisiana or Mexico, which is closer to Canada. <laughs> Neither one's great, but the fur, hmm. Yeah, I guess he goes for good old Louisiana. And he feels like he got kind of boned there. And now we go to the last one. Who is the fourth player, Red? He has gold. He won at Mexico. He's getting it. And that was. Oh! Shit. And here I forgot to play the rest of the people for turns. Let's see what I got. Purple. Where did it? And I'll try not to think of anything else. Purple took Pennsylvania. He's got grain, doesn't really matter where he goes. He's got this. Is he terribly worried about getting cut off by Virginia? No. And Virginia is the only person who can cut him off. So basically his choice is he goes first and he can cut off, try to cut off Virginia. But that doesn't seem too important for that exchange, so he's going to go last. Seems like an advantage at this point in the game. Uh, green was next. Green. Green is playing Quebec. Well, he'd like to get a jump on things, but not... Well, he, he wants to get a jump on... Uh, Southern Ontario. Purple's his only competition. So he can go fourth. No problem there. Uh, who's next? Next is this guy who's yellow. Yellow is in Louisiana. Well, he's got a lot of expanding to do to get himself towards things like fur. So he'll go third. And that leaves red with being stuck with first. Which is kind of cool because he got his pick for zero. So that's great. All right. Now I'm going to make my selections on who's going to play cards. And I think I'll take a little rest before I do that. Okay, so here we are in the card play phase. And red went first. They played Lewis and Clark, which will give them 15 bucks off Westward Ho. And they get a free Pioneer. That free pioneer is very cool. It goes here and actually takes a space on the board. They can't buy a pioneer now, but they also increase the price for everyone else. That's kind of funky, I guess. Uh, all right, next, and this gives them a bonus on Westward Ho, which may be one of the better options, especially since they're in Mexico. And they won it because they got the gold rush. So it seems like a cool card for them. They consider picking up Morse as well. Let's see what that would cost them. Uh, 15 bucks off Westward Ho means they pay 10 for that. They want to buy three tokens. So they're at 25. Telegraph is free if they take it. Yeah, why not? They'll play both cards. So their total, their biggest card is a 29. Um, I already played other people's cards, but I, I just, I'm not taking that into account here. Blue went second, and they did not want to play any of their cards. Uh, the, the tobacco card, they're in Virginia. They think they can capitalize on it better. The Oregon Trail, they can play for ore. They're near at least one ore and would be helping purple. And a discount on steamships, well, they can't buy steamships until they have railroads, so they'll wait. We go to Yellow. Yellow played the Hudson Bay Company. Why? Well, they're not going to be able to get fur anytime soon. They're not going to be able to get into Canada. They're minimizing their losses. They're helping green here. 
Uh, their other cards did not look useful to them yet. They want to wait until they have a Pioneer to play this, and they want to wait until they can play uh, Unity, which is a level 2. Necessary? No, but might as well hold a card here. Now that is the one Destiny card that can be played by anyone this turn, so everyone else has to hold. Uh, green. Green played P.T. Barnum, which will give them a circus for only 10 bucks, which seemed like a good deal. They didn't want to play the Spy, which could allow them to steal a card, or remember the Alamo, both of which produce timber, because they're in the heart of Timberland, <laughs> at least for this part of the game. And then finally, we go to Purple, who went last. They play Racial Unrest, mainly to get rid of a card. Uh, this is going to cause everybody a penalty, 15 bucks to their profit because nobody has any government cards. But, what do we got? Well, nobody's going to go below 20. There are other cards, Manifest Destiny, they can't play. It's a Destiny card. President gives, a gives money for technology or cancels certain cards that didn't get played against them. Uh, there was one here, which one? They could have played it as a, as a news event, which has no effect except to give them that 63 card, which is powerful. They didn't want to do that. Racial unrest. Oh, they can cancel that. Yeah, they're going to play that against themselves, bonusing so that they're not affected by the racial um, unrest, I think. I'm not sure if it cancels everybody's racial unrest or just theirs. If it cancels just theirs, it's worth playing, otherwise they'll hold it. Uh, what's the number? 63. Yeah, well this doesn't really help. So, I'm going to have to look this one up and I'll come back. I'll also take, uh, I'll make sure the Lewis and Clark, I'm pretty sure it does put the pip over there, but I'll make sure of that and I'll, I'll take care of any mechanical effects that take place. So I was right in my original interpretation of everything here. Uh, the President card could not have been used to negate that, so that didn't happen. Now, the order is important, and I should have been taking the mechanical effects while that happened. So for example, the Hudson Bay Company card uh, caused the Canadian player, Quebec, to get plus 10 to their profit, but now, Racial unrest reduces it by 5 for each missing government, so everybody drops down to 20, but they drop 15, and so they don't get as big a bonus as they would have anyway. So it's a good card for everybody's kind of happy about that. Uh, there was something else. Ah, we had a payout. The payout on fur, nobody has any fur, so that didn't happen. I just wanted to clarify those. Now, we're going to where everybody gets to invest, and this is done in player order, but they can do these in whatever order they like. So I'm going to take care of each and probably come back, but one thing we have to do is we have to figure out the player order for cards. So 15 over here, 30, 1, alright, we know he's going to have the last choice, 29, red's in good place, oh, blue actually falls behind. So red has first choice, green and purple, 34 green. So green gets second choice, purple gets third. And that'll be important because next turn they get to pick based on that. All right, I'm gonna take care of the investments now. I'm gonna actually go in some detail on the red player. First of all, Morse, the card gets discarded, but he gets 20 bucks off Telegraph, he gets that. That'll allow him to go through adjacent, uncontrolled territories. Two, Lewis and Clark also gets discarded. Nobody can collabor co collaborate with him because he doesn't have unity. So he'll get rid of that. And he bought Westward Ho, that only cost him 10 bucks. He bought three tokens, that's his maximum that he's allowed. See, the further in the game, ooh, except for this guy. But the further down you go in general, the more tokens you can buy. So that cost him 15 bucks for those. I forgot to mark, he's got a dude, a pioneer here. 
That just marks the cost of the Pioneers. He also has to have a little thing to mark that he actually owns one. Uh, conceivably, blocks could be an issue here, the number of blocks that you have. Now, he's allowed to research breakthroughs, which he'll do. Uh, what does he want? Hard call. He wants something easy. Uh, so see, he can get an extra control token if he wins this one. Mechanization is better. It's one of the best cards. <sighs> Hard call for him. He's not going to get either anytime soon. I think he'll go for the cheaper turnpike. He needs to roll a 1 or a 2 here, though, to make this worth anything. He gets a 2. So he gets a circular token over there. And now he's halfway to an advance. Um, he does not want to spend one of his tokens to get a city. He could still do that. He can't get a card because that requires an advance. Yeah, it's annoying that they don't express that well on the map. Uh, but he could have bought a city which would increase his production in Mexico. He doesn't want to do that though. So now he's out except for victory point marker. Uh, this is worth one, two victory points. Well notice yellow is already up a victory point. Why? Hmm. I don't remember what generated that for him. God damn. Ah, uh, that may be an error, but something led me to believe that he had one there. I can't imagine why he has one. Should Green have had it? No. I can't think of a reason anybody has this. I think I moved that instead of the red one by accident or bumped it. Red's up two victory points now. Okay. And after that, we will be going to blue and see what they do. Okay, let's try to figure out what happened now. Blue went next. They bought uh, four, five tokens, grabbed the first city, in Virginia and that looks like about it for them then we go to yellow yellow um, wants to use Yankee ingenuity so they bought themselves four six tokens they had to spend two in pioneers to get a pioneer to get that advantage and that looks like about it for them oh they bought Westward Hull which will allow them to go well, why did they buy it? They're right next to it. And that's good enough for them. Uh, I think Jefferson... Yeah, Jefferson gives them a bonus on Unity, so they wanted to move that way. They also got a roll and got the second level of Patriotism, which kind of sucks because Jefferson would give them that for free if they, when they play him. Okay, well, they wanted as much of a chance as they could, and that seemed cool. Uh, after yellow, we go to green. Green bought a pile of tokens. Three, six, seven, eight. Two to build a city up here in Quebec. Why? Well, because they want to expand and improve their timber cards. They also bought another one. Uh, so that was six, seven, eight, nine chips. That's their maximum. And they spent all their money as well. Uh, and drew a card and got one they kind of like this produce card, which gives them a bonus, or they could play Congress. Now, they also had a card, they had Barnum, which gave them 20 bucks off Circus, so for 10 bucks they picked that up, which is how they got that card. You can't get that without Circus. And then finally, Purple, who bought a pile of these, two, three, six, seven, their maximum, but they didn't do anything with them. And now we've got some victory points that have been assigned. Blue, oh, they bought a telegraph as well, which will allow them to move through an uncontrolled area, assuming they don't get blocked off by Quebec and Virginia. If they do, that's going to kind of suck for them. 
All right. Uh, now I'll go to expansion and we'll see what happens there. Okay, let's start looking at what happens with expansion. Red. Red played out uh, into Jalisco. And they spent two to get into Texas. Ignore these right now. They'll be there in a moment. These are placed white side up so that we remember to give a bonus for whatever is produced this turn. On to blue. Blue expanded into Carolina, the Smokies, and the Heartland took two tokens to take, just like Texas took two to take. Uh, then we go to yellow, and here's where things start getting interesting. Yellow had an extra token if they did this. They'd have an extra token that's not being expended. They decide, I'm going into Texas. Probably an iffy choice, because Arkansas uh, has cloth, and my guess is somewhere here. We should be able to see this. Uh, textiles, well, they show up on an arrow 1-2 card. Oil doesn't show up till late, but what it does do is it cuts red off. Yellow feels kind of hosed to begin with because of their position. They didn't get what they wanted. So taking a risky move here makes sense. So what do they have to do? Well, they had to pay two to attack. But now they get two dice against one that the red player has to defend himself. They rolled a six, which is pretty good. Red didn't get one. So he loses. Now this would go into the losses if it was an established token, but it's not. So it's not going to cost against his uh, production. You only have one token per area, so yellow loses one. All right, uh, I'll take care of the last two players and come back, I think. All right, I kind of lied. Green spread out into southern Ontario, New York, New England, and uh, maritime provinces. Why? Well, because they have this fruit card and the timber card. They're going to try to score the fruit. I think they're going to hold some of their timber and expand into Michigan if they can. But, purple's up. And purple says, I'm interested in grain and technology. Well, <laughs> purple is completely cut off. They're gonna open up by putting two tokens here to attack the heartland. Because they have telegraph, they can move two, so if they clear that, they can move into Illinois. And they'll attack blue there, and they lose. They got a four, blue got a six. So they're gonna spend two more tokens to do the same thing. This time, they get a victory, and blue's out of there. Now, they got three more tokens left. Uh, Given their situation, what do they have again? Telegraph. They can only go two spaces with that. They'll go here, and they'll put two guys here into Illinois. And they're getting more power in the grain market. Probably they're going to try to score that, but they may build a city or something. All right. Now it's the adjustment phase. <laughs> what happens there? Um, and this is kind of cool. Okay, here's where some bookkeeping takes place, and then people get their cash, and then everybody gets a card. I'm just going to take care of that without really worrying about uh, playing through it. Well, all right, let's count. Let's count what people get. Um, so, red is first. Their profit goes up by one. Well, but here's the thing. Uh, I gotta look this up because I think the guy who gets the most of these gets a bonus card. Wrong about that I was. Alright, so let's take red first. His profit goes up by one space, or five bucks. And now he'll be getting $25 at the end of the turn. Um, blue is next. Goes up by one, two, 
Then we go to yellow, who goes up by two. I thought there was a bonus to the guy who got the most uh, extra spaces. And then we go to green, who expands one, two, three, four spaces. And finally, purple, who expands three big spaces. And that's the cash everybody's going to get. These cards get removed from the game because they're only arrow one. They won't get reshuffled. And this card goes somewhere. <laughs> I'm going to put it at the bottom of the deck so that I can figure out how to reshuffle it. It could go on to the... Uh, the one deck or the two deck as well. All right, I got to pay out the cash. Then that's the end of this turn. Our victory points are set here, I believe. Uh, so I think everything's good.